So now that we've had a look at what the purpose of a presense network is, what it shows, and also how to create one, let's look at a method that we can use as uh, you know projects growing complexity to identify where our critical path actually is within a really complex network. And this is this is a technique that will work as we get networks that are hundreds of nodes, or you know hundreds of tasks, or thousands of tasks that need to be completed. But we're going to take a relatively simple um, project here just to show you the actual technique involved. Now, just a reminder, a critical path is the series of tasks that if we were to delay any one of those tasks, it would delay the entire um, project from being completed. So like the, well, the minimum time of the entire project from being completed. So how do we do this? Well, we could try, you know, going through every possible pathway and working out the total times and identify it through trial and error. But there is a method that we can use called the forward and backward scan that will help us identify this a lot easier. So starting with the forward scan, essentially, if I start with the start node over here, what I want to look at is what is the earliest possible time that I could start each task. Now, task A and task B can be started at zero units of time. Now, this units of time may change depending on what units we're in here. So this could be days, weeks, hours, whatever. But the earliest possible time that we could start these is at zero units of time. Now, as we start to move forward, we've got to look at, okay, when we're here, to start task C and D, we need task A to be completed. And task A takes eight units of time to be completed. So the earliest possible time that we could start task C and D is at eight units of time. And I'm just going to make a little note here that we refer to this as the earliest start time. Now you may see this abbreviated to EST. So if you ever see that abbreviation, that is referring to earliest start time of that particular node, which is referring to the next task that we complete. So down here, if we're looking at task E, um, it requires task B to be completed. So that can be completed as early as five units of time. So task E can be started at earliest at five units of time. However, when we look at this particular node here where task G and H are requiring task D and E to be completed, we've got to have a look at both options here because we can start um, through node E, task G and H as early as nine units of time. However, we can't start G and H until task D is also complete. And task D can't be completed until 11 units of time. So the earliest possible time that we can start these is at 11 units of time. And that's what we actually enter here, despite, you know, task E being completed as early as nine units of time. And what we're actually saying here is we can actually delay task B and E here and not delay the whole project. How much by? Well, it'll be two units of time between the two tasks in total. I refer to that as slack time, but I'll write that down in a little bit. So continuing on, um, so obviously to find this node's earliest start time, like task I, we have to have a look here first. So we can start task C as early as um, eight units of time. Task C takes 12 units. So we can't start F until 20 units of time. And now we can start having a look at this node here. Task I requires both G and F to be completed. We can start G as early as 11. So we can finish G as early as 17. However, we need task F completed as well, and that's not going to be completed until at least 27 units of time. So we can't start task I until the 27 there. So now, oops, let me quickly flick back. Um, so now when we're looking at this node, we need here first. So H can be started as early as 11 units of time. Uh, so we can't start task J and still task eight. Uh, the eight from H has been completed, which will be at 19 units of time. And then we look at this particular node for task K, we need I and J. J can be completed as early as 25. However, I can't be completed until 30 units of time. So the earliest we can start K is at 30. And then our project will be completed at 34 units of time. Now, this 34 is how, like the minimum time for our entire project um, for it to be completed as long as we don't have any delays to any of the critical tasks or we don't delay a non-critical task by longer than the slack time available. And I'll talk about that as we start working back. 
but we've just performed a forward scan. We're not quite ready to easily identify where our critical path is until we now complete a backwards scan. And what a backwards scan looks at is what is the latest time that we could start a task without delaying the overall project? So if we look here, as an example, we need to complete task K by 34 units of time to not delay the whole project, which means K takes four units of time. We've got to start K by 30 at the absolute latest. If we start at 31 units of time, we're going to delay the project by one unit of time. So that's the part that we put in here and we refer to this value here as the latest start time. Which can be abbreviated again, and you might see this abbreviation as LST. So the latest possible start time of our network. And now we just continue going back, but there's some things that we need to be aware of as we work backwards here. So let's look at task J just for a second. So task J, we can start task J as early as 19 units of time. However, we need to complete it by 30 units of time to not delay the project. Task J takes six units, so we need to start it no later than 24 units of time, which means that we have some slack time for task J and also task H here. Um, in that our slack time, we could delay these tasks by a total of five units of time without delaying uh, the entirety of the project. Now, something I want to note here is the slack time isn't always as easy as just calculating the difference between these two uh, values. Uh, and I'll show that in a little bit, but we can see here that task J clearly, we could delay it by five hours and it would have no overall effect on the earliest uh, project finishing time. Now, as we look at uh, the latest possible start time that we could use for I, um, well, we need to have it started no later than 27. So we put 27 in here. And now we come to something that we need to be, um, you know, calculate a little bit. We've got two different paths coming to this particular node. And we've got to look at it and go, well, the latest possible time that we could start task G without starting the over, uh, restarting the overall project would be um, 21 units of time. All right. However, we're going to have a different value if we look here. So H, we can start that as late as uh, 16 units of time. So we've got that uh, 21 units and 16 units of time. The one that we put here when we've got multiple coming to it is the lowest value. So in this case, it's the 16 that we're gonna put here as our latest possible start time, which comes to my slack time for G. The slack time for G, we actually have to do a little bit of a calculation because we can start G as late as 21 units of time. We can start as early as 11 units of time. So there's a 10 units of time difference between that. So task G has 10 hours of slack time. However, that's not the difference between these two values because we've got a second um, task coming out of this particular node. Um, so you do have to actually manually calculate what the slack time is and don't just always think it's always going to be the difference between these two values like it was here. All right. So essentially when we've got two that come to it, we take the lowest value. That's the one that we're going to input. So task F, uh, we need to look at this. So we can start task F as late as 20 without delaying our entire project. And now we look over here. And once again, we've got two coming to this. So we've got to take the smallest of the two. We can start task D as late as 13. All right, without having any um, delay in the project. So there is some slack time here for task D. However, task C needs to be completed no later than eight. Uh, so started no later than eight, I should say. Um, otherwise, there'll be a delay in the project. And this is a good example of, um, like a very good example of task D has slack time, even though this doesn't show like there's any slack time here. So you do have to manually calculate these um, slack times as we go. Now, looking down on this particular node, uh, we can start this task as late as 12 without there being any um, delay to the project because as long as we have it done by 16, we're all good um, without delaying the project. So we're always looking at the latest start time here. And then obviously, as we go to here, we need to start task A right on time. Otherwise, we'll delay the whole time. And that's a smaller value as we're going back.
Now, a good way to double check that you've done this correctly uh, for the most part is to make sure that you end up at double zero when we get back. We should always end up here, as long as we've done it correctly, at double zero. So now, we've now completed the forward and backward scan. How do we actually use this um, to be able to quickly identify the critical path of our uh, network. Well, what we're actually looking for here is where do we have the two values the same as we go through? Because this is where it's indicating that there is a place where we cannot start the, like delay the next task from starting without delaying the whole project. Now, we've got to be careful at times because you can see that task D can be delayed. However, task C can't be. So you can see here that we've got to do task A first. That's the most critical. Then we've got to do task C. We can't afford to delay that, which means we can't afford to ta delay task F, which means we can't afford to delay task I because we're just following these. So basically where these values are the same as each other is indicating to you that they are. there is a critical task there connecting and that will identify our critical path. So here, our critical path is the following tasks. So it's A to C to F to I to K. Um, if we're looking at minimum completion time, so these are some things that you'll often get asked, so minimum uh, completion time. is 34 units. Now obviously I wouldn't just write 34. Um, usually I just might put units just for the sake of this. Just because usually you are given in your context of the question what the units of time are. It's very important that you use those units. Um, and you might also be asked um, at some stage, you know, where's the slack time for certain tasks. Now, every one of these tasks I've highlighted are what we call a critical task. And if we were to delay any one of those tasks, it would delay the whole project. However, equally saying that there's only so much we can delay non-critical tasks without delaying the project anyway. Because let's just look at this slack time. I had five hours of slack time for task J here. If I was to delay task J by 10 hours, well, or 10 units of time, I don't know what the units are, um, it's going to delay the entire project overall. So you've just got to keep in mind that while there is slack time at certain tasks, um, A, you need to calculate that, but B, um, there's only a certain amount of time that we can delay it for without actually changing the critical path or um, affecting the, the earliest possible finish time for the overall project. But that sort of summarizes very quickly how we can perform a forward and backward scan um, to be able to identify the critical path. In my next video, I'm gonna quickly look at an example where we've got a dummy link. And I think that's very important to have a look at um, as we work through before you start playing around with these types of questions.